Magnesium is super, super hot right now. And I thought I'd do this video to talk about a clinical study that I was actually a part of that had to do with magnesium uptake and magnesium levels in the body. So super, super proud of this, published here in 2018, so brand spanking new. But anyway, the reason that I wanna talk about this is because so many people have been talking about different magnesium products, different forms of magnesium, and how they absorb in the body and how they're actually utilized. So let's get right into what more of the common magnesiums that you would see out on the market are, and let's talk about how they act in the body. So first of all, magnesium can be a little bit sketchy because a lot of times magnesium ends up not being absorbed very well. Now, if you've ever taken magnesium sulfate, which is also known as Epsom salt, you know that it actually makes you go to the bathroom quite fast. So it causes an osmotic effect within the colon. What that means is that it ends up changing up the skew of how water is in the colon versus out of the colon, which can throw off mineral balances even more and cause you to have, well, pretty loose stools and quite honestly feel very, very uncomfortable. So when you look at a lot of different magnesium products that are out there on the shelves in most stores, you're looking at things like magnesium oxide, magnesium carbonate, and the problem is these have a very low availability within the body, which means they end up disturbing that overall osmotic balance that we have in the colon and the small intestine. So that bioavailability that is low ends up causing all the GI discomfort that you would ordinarily get with most magnesium. So what we did is we wanted to take a look at the different kinds of magnesium and how they're actually absorbed. So when you look at what physicians usually recommend for like magnesium deficiency issues and things like that, they usually recommend magnesium malate. Okay, magnesium malate is a lot more expensive, but it does have a better bioavailability. So what we did is with Jigsaw SRT, we took a look at something called dimagnesium malate. Okay, so malate just means that it's bound to malic acid. So when you look at dimagnesium malate, what we did is we took two magnesium ions and bound them to malic acid. So we had a very bioavailable, very absorbable form of magnesium. Then additionally, added an SRT component to make it sustained release so that it actually took a longer period of time to absorb. So you weren't just getting this massive influx that the body didn't know what to do with. So then we get to the study. Let's talk about what we did in Scottsdale here that was just published in 2018. So the study was published in the Journal of the American College of Nutrition here in 2018, and it's called the Scottsdale Magnesium Study. And we took a look at absorption, cellular uptake, but also magnesium deficiency symptoms to see if magnesium was truly absorbed and how it affected symptoms based on a questionnaire for participants that started. The study was done over a period of 30 to 90 days, and we took 91 participants. So there are 53 participants that took magnesium SRT from Jigsaw, okay, 500 milligrams, and then the rest took a placebo. So there's a few things that they wanted to measure after they took the magnesium supplement. They wanted to measure, of course, their serum magnesium, which is the overall levels of magnesium that ultimately ended up in their body. Then they wanted to look at what's called RBC magnesium. Okay, RBC magnesium stands for red blood cell magnesium. This is very, very important. What this is, is this is the magnesium that is actually building up in your body and getting inside your bones. Okay, getting with the red blood cells and the marrow, getting into where it needs to go to actually have a long-term effect on the body. So we wanted to look at that over a longer period of time. Serum magnesium can be looked at over a shorter period of time. That's more indicative of how well is a product being absorbed or how well is a mineral being absorbed in a shorter amount of time. So between four and eight hours after taking the magnesium is when they measured the overall serum magnesium. But after 30 and 90 days is when they truly looked at the RBC to see how it was really building up within the body. So they found that there was a 22% increase in serum magnesium levels. Okay, this is pretty phenomenal because before now, there wasn't any way to really prove whether a magnesium was absorbed or not. So when we have a 22% increase in serum magnesium, that means that we are literally getting 22% more magnesium in our body ready to be used, okay? Now here's where it gets really fascinating. There was over a 30% increase in RBC magnesium over time. Again, that RBC magnesium is magnesium that's actually getting into the marrow and ultimately being able to be used by the body, okay? Competing against calcium, helping your body have a little bit more of a calming effect versus the excitatory effect from excess calcium ions going through the body. So very, very powerful that we saw that, okay? Then at the beginning of this study, they did give all the participants a questionnaire, okay? They wanted to note their magnesium deficiency symptoms, okay? We're talking about things like leg cramps. We're talking about things like irritability, all these little things that go along with magnesium deficiency. Then at the end of 30 and 90 days, they measured them again they had them fill out another questionnaire and see how their overall symptoms were doing. Well, guess what? After 90 days, 63% decrease in magnesium deficiency symptoms. That is powerful. 
So for someone that is normally having leg cramps, or someone that is normally having the issues that arise with magnesium deficiency, we were able to prove with the Scottsdale Magnesium Study that you can start to reduce magnesium deficiency symptoms. So if you combine that with a cumulative buildup of magnesium in the body, you can start to get the results that you want. So I hope that this clears up a little bit about magnesium and how it truly works in the body. We're super proud to have published this study, super proud to be able to be a part of true science and actually changing lives. And I also wanna add that 91% of the participants that participated in this study tolerated the product very, very well meaning they tolerated Jigsaw Magnesium SRT exceptionally well. Just so that you know, that is very, very rare in a study. You don't usually see something that well tolerated. Usually it's like a 70, 80% stick-through rate. Most people end up falling off. So not only do we find that it has amazing effects in the body, we also found that it's well tolerated amongst most people. And to add one more thing to make this really, really powerful, when you're normally looking at a clinical study, usually you're looking at a one and a half times better than placebo effect. Well, in this case, five times better than placebo. So most pharmaceutical companies, when they're doing any kind of clinical trial, all they are looking for is the drug to be one and a half times better than placebo. And that is kind of the gold standard. Well, mag SRT, five times better than placebo. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. I did put a link down to Jigsaw Magnesium below. You can get it on Amazon. This isn't a hardcore product push. It's just to tell you about an amazing, amazing thing and an awesome study that I've been a part of. So link is down below. But as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. If you want to see more magnesium content, hit it in the comments below. I'll help you understand how it works in the body.